And we're live. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. How are you? Welcome to another installment of Mo and Joe's. This is episode 14. Uh, today we're going to be building a crosscut sled. I'll be giving it just a few minutes, let some people join on the stream, clean up my messier than usual shop. I've got three projects in progress right now. Uh, one you're going to see a video for very soon. Um, I built some uh, virtual learning desks for my daughters. Uh, I think they turned out really cool. I tried to make them with really basic materials and tried to build something that uh, was really easy to replicate. Let me bring you guys a little bit closer. I don't know why I have the, laptop, the computer so far away. Uh, can you hear me all right? Is the stream coming through okay? I don't have my dad here today, so I need you guys to be my tech support too. Really apologize for that. All right, so today we're building a crosscut sled. Uh, it's gonna be a basic like half inch base. Um, and then it's going to use uh, uh, UHMW um, runners and uh, three quarter inch uh, MDF fences. Um, so if you're building along at home, which I really hope you're not, that's not safe, um, then uh, you can grab your materials. Um, but uh, otherwise, go at it. Uh, this should be a quick project, so we are going to have Creators of the Week this week, um, and then a quick Q&A session, hopefully at the end, if we have time. Uh, I'm drinking a nice uh, dark coffee, dark roast coffee, uh, no cream, no sugar, that's just how I take it. And I want to thank the ongoing sponsor for this stream, Toro. Um, they uh, sent me over the time cutter to check out, which is a really nice uh, Z-turn motor, zero-turn mo zero mower. Uh, it also has an integrated suspension system and uh, a dual, dual head cutter, 52-inch bed. Uh, really nice mower, uh, really smooth ride. Um, really easy to like, kind of familiarize yourself and get ready to ride. I, I have to mow three acres every week. So it's been nice to have them on as a sponsor for the channel and for the live stream. Uh, hope to see more from them soon. I think next week we're gonna start talking with them instead of our project, we're gonna start talking with them about uh, some uh, tips for getting your yard in good shape in the fall. Uh, I'm gonna have one of their yard experts on, hopefully in the next couple weeks. I need to work that out. Um, so join me for that. Uh, otherwise, let's go ahead and jump into the project. Uh, let me. Double check one more time, how's the stream quality going? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me? Is anybody there? I see two people on, I don't know what's going on here. Something happened, it's normally more than that. We got three, can you guys hear me okay? Can you guys see me okay? I know I'm not in frame right now, but I'm just looking for someone to drop a comment and let me know. Uh, if you are in the stream, drop a like, drop a comment, just so that uh, YouTube knows that people are engaging with my stream. That way it'll get served out to the rest of my audience. Uh, so we can all have a nice little fun build together here on a Sunday morning. Oh, some housekeeping, um, which to the two of you, welcome. Um, but uh, the next couple weeks I'm going to be uh, camping over the weekends. Um, we did just get the new RV, you might have seen the pictures on Instagram. Uh, if you didn't, you can check me out on Instagram, at The Woodwork Life. Okay, we got a comment, what's up? Everything sounding good? Freezing every few seconds, okay. So I've got some bandwidth issues. See if I can mess with that. Sorry guys, I am not a pro streamer. Uh, let's try lowering the bit rate just a bit. All right. How's that, is that better? Are we not freezing? Freezing a little bit better? Sorry, I have a really bad network connection. I live out in the middle of nowhere and I uh, have to be on mobile internet and uh, it doesn't get super consistent uploads. So uh, I lowered the bitrate just a little bit. Hopefully that will smooth things out. Um, anyways, uh, so yeah, so the next couple weeks um, I will be uh, out in the field. If I can, if I've got enough bandwidth out there, I'll try to do something for my cell phone. Um, try to get you guys a stream of building some uh, fun, like, you know, bushcraft. So that'll be fun. I don't have a ton of experience, but it'll just be cool to hang out with you guys in the morning. Uh, you can kind of see wherever we're at. Um, 
But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started on this project now. Everybody having a good week? Everything going okay? <clears throat> so this project I am going to be taking off the blade guard. Um, so if you're a safety Nazi and that makes you squeamish, um, I apologize ahead of time, but it's necessary to do a proper crosscut sled. Um, I've done a full YouTube video on this. It's actually my most popular video. Uh, it was uh, three simple jigs you can build to uh, get professional results out of a job site table saw. Um, this kind of is in the same vein as that. Um, but I wanted to build one for my new saw because I needed to. You guys see me okay? Let me change the angle just a little bit. But I needed to build a new, uh, a new jig for my new saw. This is the Laguna Fusion 3. <coughs> um, so I th thought it was as good a time as any to build uh, a new crosscut sled. Uh, this is just a basic one. I'm still probably going to revisit this in a full video and uh, make something that's a little more uh, feature rich because I do enjoy something that's got like a miter adjustment and a, you know some other features. Um, but this is going to be enough to get me started. Um, so uh, for runners, uh, you have a lot of different options. You can cut hardwood runners. Uh, you can cut, uh, uh, you can get metal runners, milled. Um, there's a lot of solutions for runners uh, on the market. I personally prefer, um, at least most of the time, we'll see, I haven't tried all the options. Um, I personally prefer buying a cheapo cutting board. Uh, this one I bought at Ikea for like $4 and just cutting it into a bunch of stock of these runners. So these are UHMW cutting boards and which is, or, yeah, whatever it means. Um, might not even be the right word for it, but though, I just keep these around. Um, I cut them to whatever saw I have. Um, I'll basically cut them at the table saw a little bit proud and then I will uh, cut them with, I'll, I'll shave off the last little bit with a hand plane until I get a perfect fit. And then I can use as many of these as I need to get whatever length that I need to get perfect fitting runners. So I've got these four. They're going to make up the runners for this sled. Um, and the first step of uh, building this is actually attaching those runners. So here's the scary part. I'm going to remove the guard from my saw, which I only recommend when you have to, but sometimes you have to. Uh, because we're going to be raising the blade up through here, and so we can't have a riving knife or anything like that to get in the way. Um, then, for this first step, I'm going to be lowering the blade all the way into the table. And then I'm going to take my runners out, and I'm going to take a couple of nuts, which I know in the other video I said bolts by accident, but you know, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, so you're going to put a couple nuts in here. These are just going to boost the runners off of the bottom of the uh, sl miter slots. So I'm just going to put these kind of evenly spaced. And then on top of those, I'm going to place the runners. Trying to line up with the, um, I'm going to put the longer runner up top here. <coughs> I'm trying to line up somewhat with the top and bottom of the miter slot. Like that. And then we'll place that one. And what's nice about a uh, crosscut sled is it not only makes, allows you to make quick and easy and repeatable, um, quick and easy repeatable crosscuts, um, but it's also safer. Uh, it can help with your dust collection. It helps you from getting tear out because you have uh, the zero clearance fence basically automatically built into your crosscut sled. Um, and it extends your fence for your miter fence. That gives you the ability to make a lot more accurate cut. So we've got those in. We want to attach those onto the surface here. And what I'm going to use is just a little bit of CA glue. Uh, I hope this works. It doesn't always stick very well because this actually has a textured surface since these were cutting boards. Um, so I'm just putting a couple dollops of CA glue. This is, I'm using medium thickness CA glue uh, because I'm hoping that it's going to be a little bit longer setup time. 
And then it's also going to grip the, or it's gonna fill any of those voids a little better. So like the really thin stuff would mainly just soak into the cutting board. Okay, just a few dollops. Got that. And then we've got our substrate over here. Take the fence over, line it where we want it. I don't want much overhang. And then we're just gonna lay that down. So we're using the fence to kind of give, give us an initial reference to, uh, we're using the fence to give us an initial reference, that way it is somewhat close to square. Um, this, that'll just make things later a lot easier. So I'm just gonna hold this down. Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, I'm just gonna hold this down here for a little bit while the super glue sets up. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can take these out of the miter slots and then drive screws down through the bottom to attach this thing permanently. Um, I don't like having, you can countersink screws from the top, but I don't like the screws being on the surface. I like to keep this as clean as possible. So how are you guys? How's your week? Let's see, you got any comments? Welcome to the stream. We've got a couple people in here. Hey mom, good morning. Shorter freezes now, okay, weird. I have a table saw that has a narrower section above the wider runner slot below. How would you handle that? I don't quite understand what you're saying, Angela. Table saw that has a narrower section above the wider runner slot below. Okay, so it's got like a narrower runner slot and it's got a wider runner slot above that. Um, hmm, is, the, is it just a wider, one wider section and then a narrower section? Is, or, so you're talking about vertically? Like is it narrower at the bottom of the runner and wider at the top? If that's the case, you would build a runner that would fit that top slot no, they would fit the bottom slot and run the full length. If you're talking about it's like narrower at the bottom of the saw and it gets wider at the top of the saw, I've never seen that happen. Um, but you would just need extra long runners that stay in that narrower section as long as they can. Um, that way they wouldn't have any issues. And then uh, I've got another one. Good morning, what's up Mark? I'm doing good, rocking out, feeling great. Just had my daughter's fourth birthday party yesterday, so still a little bit, you know, kind of, Recovering from doing the party thing. Uh, well, we got two out of. I'm gonna try to attach that last one again. I don't know why this, why the other one stuck and this one didn't. But uh, yeah. Glue didn't even set up over here, weird. Okay, let's try that one more time. That jerk. Oh, other one down. Yeah, you can see this glue just does not want to stick to the UHMW. Such is life though, right? <sighs> we'll try that again. If not, I have a backup plan. Okay, that one's not on the bolts. No good there. Yeah, UHMW is super slippery stuff, so of course it doesn't want to stick to the glue, which is really annoying. Let's see what we got. We've got one that's actually stuck. We've got one that has a dollop that hasn't cured. We've got another. One of the bolts came out at some point. Interesting. There it is, stuck to the runner. I think let's try to do that again. All right, I guess I gotta wait for the glue to dry a little bit longer. Give it a little, give it some love. This is just some accelerant. Here, I'm gonna try to give it a little dollop too at the edges here that I can just cure in. There's like a little piece of caulk or something, basically. <sighs> How's everybody else's week going? 
Yeah, we had a lot of birthday festivities and house cleaning leading up to that and stuff. And then I've been work building. We, we just started virtual learning, so we've been uh, just started virtual learning, so I've been adjusting to that. Like I said, I, well, you guys probably weren't all on here yet. Uh, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be releasing a video here probably in the next couple of days doing the virtual learning desks for my daughters. Uh, I've got full plans for those. Um, I think they turned out really cool. They're super easy to build, super basic materials. Uh, I really hope that you guys like those. That'll be a really neat video. Um, as I stand here holding down a piece of wood, that's the current project today, just holding wood in place. Now, uh, so this is gonna be the cross-cut sled. Uh, I'm installing the runners right now. I've got a couple pieces of uh, uh, cutting board that I'm using as sliders and uh, I'm trying to get them to adhere to this so that I can flip, take this out and attach them from the bottom with screws. So bear with me for just a moment. Um, today we are gonna have uh, Creators of the Week at the end of the stream, because this project should be pretty quick. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then like I said, next week, if you guys are into maintaining your yard, I'm gonna try to have someone on from our sponsor Toro to actually talk about uh, getting ready for fall with your yards. I know it's super like generic dad move, but uh, hey, everybody's got to have a nice green yard, right? All right, I'm hoping that works. I'll slide it out more carefully this time. All right, I don't need those to be adhered. I just need them to be in place. I think we're good. Okay, so now we've got our runners installed. And we've got, of course, some dollops of super glue under here, which frustrates me because that'll be a pain in the butt to clean off. I won't do that, though. I'm just gonna cure that stuff real quick. All I'm gonna do is sand that off with some low grit sandpaper. I just don't want to stick to my sled now. All right, so we've got that. Now we're gonna attach these through the bottom. Make sure all of the Oh, come on, that's not what I want. How much you guys want to bet this slide is, this thing's going to stick, but it will. All right, so we'll attach three of these sliders anyway. We'll mess with the other one later. Um, so how we're going to do that is we're going to pre-drill for a couple of short screws, and then we're going to countersink um, I keep these 5 8 inch screws around just for this purpose. They're just these like little tiny little Phillips head screws. I'm not sure if you can see that. Okay, let me turn this light up here. Of course, I set this up. Didn't turn it on. So you can see just little tiny screws there. They're just little short 5 8 inch thingies. I always, I always keep them around so I can drop them. Focus. Anyways, so I've got these short screws. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill a couple holes for them, and then I'm also going to um, countersink them. Um, and for these, since I have flat, flat heads, I'm going to use a regular drill bit to countersink for them. So see which head size properly sinks them. For these 5 8 inch, it looks like this 5 16 covers the head size. All right, so I'm not going to do that one. So I'm just going very shallowly into each of these. I'm going to put like four screws per runner just to keep them nice and secure. These are kind of your reference surfaces. So once you do these right, everything else about this project is super easy. Man, you feel a lot more mortal when you're working live in front of a camera, building stuff, versus when you're building, editing each video. 
I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that for sure. Yeah, it's nice when you're editing because you can take whichever cut makes you look the best. When you're working live, just take the mistakes as they go. It's by no means my first uh, crosscut sled, but uh, you know, my first live. All right, so now we got that. Got to go get this drill bit. So we can drive these screws in. How's everybody doing? Everything okay? Okay, so Angela, yeah, the wider on the bottom and then tab sections that stick into the upper section of the slot, making it narrower. Skill saw contractor saw feature. Okay, cool. So on the bottom, there's a tab section that sticks into the upper section of the slot, making it narrower or shallow, Angela? I'm, tr I'm still trying to understand exactly what's going on. I'd love to help you out with this. All right, so these are these little guys are Phillips head. I really wish I could find some tiny little Torx head screws or a Robertson or something, but I'll survive. I'm driving these screws with a screwdriver rather than an impact driver because I don't want them to try to pull through the entire piece. Kind of. So uh, one of the creators I've been watching a lot of lately, she's actually gonna be one of my creators of the week anyway. Um, I really like the way that he goes through his processes and he tries to like analyze for uh, downtime. Um, I know it's not like a production environment that he's working in, and neither am I, but it's always nice to figure out how you can do things like quicker. Um, speed's not always paramount, but uh, it's always nice when you can take out like redundancy out of like your build processes. I, I really respect that. Um, him and Jimmy DeResta do it really well. Jimmy's, Jimmy does it at another level. It's really interesting. Um, but uh, I do really appreciate that like bring into some of these builds. I wish I was more repetitive, more more like predictable. I'm kind of a loose cannon when it comes to my shop. I just kind of go to general straight creativity. <laughs> uh, and I try not to get too tied up into the stuff. I mean, I do engineering work at, during the day. So I would rather not have to think procedurally during my hobbies, to be totally honest. Okay. I'm going to try to reset that one runner that didn't stick. And uh, then we're going to move on to the next step of this process. Come on, get out. Sorry, I left my compressor on. I have all of my, I have all my electric like dust collector and my, uh, my dust collector, all that stuff is all connected to a little 15 inch, 15 amp lamp switch, uh, like a remote lamp switch. Um, so that turns on my table saw dust collector, my main dust collector, and my compressor. Um, and it's all right here at the table saw. So if ever you see me reach down there to turn something on or off, that's all I'm doing. It's just turning on or off the, uh, it's just flipping that little lamp switch control. Oh, I had a couple screws pop through. That's annoying. Okay, so we're sliding good. No play. I'm gonna still do that last runner. 
for fun. And because it'll make it a little bit easier to align if I'm making a long cut. So I'll put a couple more dollops of super glue on here. And this time, since I know where it's going to land, I'm going to put some accelerator on the bottom of the table saw slit. Should set up really quick and really strong. All right, now we should get a good bond. I know it's not pressure activated, but whatever. All right. This is fun watching glue dry, isn't it? So anybody have any suggestions for projects for either while I'm bushcrafting, uh, doing stuff while I'm camping, or any suggestions for any projects for the next time I'm in the shop live streaming? I would love some to do some viewer suggested projects. Last week I did the, uh, the distance learning desk uh, because that was the top one on, uh, on the community page that got the most uh, votes. Uh, this week I'm doing the crosscut sled because it was actually the one that got the second most, the second most votes. So I do pay attention to that when I'm picking out these builds. A lot of times, you know, it's, I've got a ton of stuff I need to build, but I'm always like trying to figure out like what's a what's a good project for the stream versus what's a good project for videos versus what's the a project that I just need to do that I don't want to feature on either. So open to suggestions for stuff that you guys want to see in this kind of format with all the mistakes included. <laughs> Installed, so we can move on to the next step in this pro project. That's not going to work that great, but whatever. This is a very simple project. It seems like there's a lot of precision to it, but it's mainly just like adjustments and stuff. As long as you have your table saw set up really well in the beginning, most of the stuff should be pretty straightforward. Like if your fence is super accurate, if your uh, miter slots are super parallel to your blade already, which they should be, and if they aren't, I do have a table saw setup video you can check out. Um, but once you do all that stuff, this piece is pretty easy. I'll try to link to all those videos when I put this thing onto a video on demand. They changed the way that the live streaming setup works on YouTube, so it's not so easy to do a good description on these anymore. But whatever. All right, cool. So we got the runners. Let me go check the comments real quick. Make sure this thing still glides. Couple nuts stick out. Got it. Hey, hey. We're still sliding real nice. Good stuff. All right, let's check the comments. How's everything going? Angela, look at it vertically from the front of the saw. Bottom section of the slot is like yours, okay. Above that, tabs go in horizontally. So it's kind of like a T-slot, really. Okay, so a couple ways you could approach that. For the runners, um, in the T-slot example, you could either pick the narrowest part and use a runner that fits into that space. It should honestly be okay. Um, you could also, um, I don't know how thick they are, but you could put like, like a washer head screw and use those as runners. Just use a couple of washer head screws into the bottom of your board. Um, that would work. Um, hmm. I'll have to think about that. As long as you can get something down in there, though, it doesn't have to be the full, like it, the, the width of it doesn't matter so much as long as it rides in the slots and sits straight. Um, so those tabs, like my, I have little tabs down mine too. It's just it's wider and then it's uh, the narrow, I'm only fitting into the narrower piece. Um, 
So yeah, as long as you can get something down in there, it doesn't have to go into those T-slots. Uh, it should still work just fine. All right, <clears throat> so the next step on here is to install the back fence. Um, the back fence really isn't a reference surface. It's just there. The back fence is just there to keep the sled together as we do the rest of this stuff. Um, and then it also helps a little bit with dust collection. Um, all I'm going to do is line that up with the back edge. Actually, you know, if you want to go a little bit extra on it, and I will. Uh, you can use a, a framing square. Then with all these alignments, I try to use the longest framing square that I can fit in the application. But you basically will just align this with your fence, because your fence should be aligned with your miter slots, and your miter slots should be aligned with your blade. Um, so there is some degree of error in here, but it should be minimal. And now fortunately, because my fence is set up really well, it matches up perfectly. Um, so with this again, I'm just going to put a little bit of CA glue to make it easier to attach, and then I'm going to attach it from the bottom. So again, now this is wood to wood, so this is where CA glue is going to be perfect. And I'm using tight bonds, I also use star bonds, um, CA glues, I mean, chemically I think they're probably pretty similar. But the big thing I like about both of them is having an accelerant so you can set up real quick. So we're square to the fence to the degree which is necessary. Just let that set up. Not scrape the fence actually. Bring it down a bit. Now this flexes, so it's probably not 100% square. But like I said, it doesn't particularly matter. It's really just to hold the sled together. And I went with four inches on here. You could probably go a little bit shallower. It doesn't really matter that much. I just wanted to be able to raise the blade entirely without the sled's integrity. All right, so we got that. We will take it out of, this, of the saw now. And we're going to pre-drill for some inch and three-quarter screws. Since this is MDF, just be careful to make sure you clear all your chips as you drill. So this is three quarter inch MDF. Um, I like to use manufactured materials uh, because um, with hardwoods, they're gonna warp over time. These manufactured woods, be it MDF and plywood like I'm using for the base, they're gonna generally stay much, much flatter. They kind of do what you tell them instead of doing what they wanna do. Because although the wood that's in them, the glue wasn't, so uh, you also want to be careful not to put any screws where your saw blade's going to come through. All right, I'm going to countersink these as well. Let me get my countersink bit real quick. <coughs> Having this organization station on my wall has been super, super helpful in just keeping things like right at arm's reach. <coughs> so I just, I labeled like crazy and every, you know, place for everything, everything in its place. It's so much faster to get around my shop now. Which really helps with video production. Unfortunately, COVID happened, so I haven't had nearly as much time as I used to.
units. Now, these you can do with an impact driver. Just be gentle. Um, you can split MDF. That's one of the things I don't like about it. One of many things, honestly. I'm working with it a lot more lately, but, but just be gentle. See, if I were making a video of this, I'd be speeding through this. And I'd only show you enough screws to be driven to let you know that, hey, I'm driving screws. But now, you get to see me drive all of them. Isn't that fun? So all these screws are well below, a little bit below flush with the surface as I'm driving them in. Um, that way they don't scratch the saw as they go through. We've got our back fence, we've got our runners, and now we're ready for the fun part, the business end of a minor, of a crosscut sled. So now we want to put our sled into our onto our into the slots, position it roughly where the blade is like hitting the middle of it. Um, and this is kind of the scary part. Um, and this is like I said, this is why you have to remove the blade guard. You'll start your saw and then you'll raise it through the middle, extend that line just a little bit front and back. That's gonna be a reference for you to install the front fence. So let's check that out. poking through just enough that we can use that as a reference surface. Uh, and we're gonna use our best square, our best longest square to figure um, So, what I suggest, and this is not my technique, this is uh, founded, started by, uh, his name is uh, William Ng, William NG. He's got a YouTube video on this. It's the best way to do a, a, a crosscut sled. Um, I've never seen anything better than it but I'll walk you through the technique anyway, even though it's not my technique. So we'll lower the blade back down. That's just a reference cut that we have now. We'll bring the saw just off the edge so that we can install a pivot point down here at the bottom. Um, you'll wanna use a one pivot to start with, um, and that'll stay your pivot throughout the rest of the build. And I really hope I remember the math for this. I've done this several times, but the math is trivial, I guess. So I'm gonna drill a pilot hole. <laughs> into the bottom, and countersink it. And this is our pivot. Install one screw. that's the first one that splits why not um, okay so now we've got our initial cut there what you're going to do not to do this as far away from that slot as possible is we're going to line up this fence perfectly square to that initial cut that you have and then I'm going to clamp it in place. I left just a bit hanging off the edge of this just for this purpose. So we're going to line up as much as, as close as we can with this, with this cut. 
You can pick either side, but just pick one side for pick, pick it for reference and stick with it. And just make sure there's no gap along the full length of that square. So I can actually come back just a little bit. I've just got it lightly clamped now so I can make these minor adjustments. All right, and I'm just really trying to get, the better you have it initially, the better it's gonna, the easier it's gonna be to adjust. So I'm just making little micro adjustments on the squaricity of this cut, or of the fence relative to this cut. And I think that's about as good as we're gonna get initially. So I'll tighten down the clamp. And I'll do the same thing over here. So I put the pivot over there. I'm gonna pull back over to this other side. I'm just gonna install a, a like a screw for reference, basically. So this is my first attempt at squaring. And we might need to do this several times. So. Countersink. Now we'll drive the screw. All right, so now we have a pivot point, and we have over here is our first measurement, our first reference screw. Um, now, what we'll need is we'll need a sample piece to do what's called the four cut method. It doesn't need to be square. Nothing really needs to be special about it. So this is going to be the first time we cut through our fence. So I've got just a piece of plywood here. Um, usually it's easy to do this with plywood. Uh, you'll want to mark your cut locations. So I'm just going to do it with a marker for easy visibility. And I'm going to bring, change your guys' angle a little bit. All right, now you should be able to see the top above the saw. So I'm gonna do cut one, two, three, and then four. And what we're testing is how square each of these cuts, subsequent cuts. So we're gonna raise the saw through the material now. And this first cut we're going to just use to uh, go through the fence. Okay, so we're gonna make the first cut now. I'm making a second panel just in case I need it. All right, so cut one. And then we're going to reference, I don't know if you guys hear me okay, we're going to reference off of cut one to make cut two. And then we're going to reference off cut, through, cut two to make cut three. reference off cut three to make cut four and cut four we're gonna make a little bit wider make it like about an inch all right and then cut four this off cut is gonna be our measuring piece so we want to mark the front and the back so we can keep that consistent and then we're going to get some calipers to see what our error is. All 
Uh, these don't have to be super precision calipers. I've got this nice set of Husky calipers. They do just fine for this. I prefer analog, but I have digital, so I do what I can. So what we'll do now is we'll measure this front section here. And this is at 1.1635 inches. We'll write that on there. 1.1635. X side here. And this is 1.1825. 1 1.1825. And then the length of this piece is 11 and a half. So the total of this is 11.5 inches from end to end. All right, so we've got that. So to figure out our error, we know it's at least two hundredths over 11 and a half inches, um, which is to adjust these at least once to try to make it as best I can. So we'll open up any calculator app. Okay. And we'll do 1.1825 1 minus 1.1635. So minus the back and the front. So we got 0.19. And then we'll divide that by um, how many inches our piece is. So divided by 11.5. So we've got. 0 0.001625 per inch, but we did that by error by four. So you divide that by four, and we're actually only 0 0.004 inches, or 0 0.004 inches per inch of error. Um, so I think we can get that a little bit better, but honestly, that's gonna be super hard to figure out. But all the only thing we need to know to figure that out, to adjust it, and this is where we can see if it's even viable, is you'll measure the distance between one screw and the other screw. Um, so this is a very big sled, so I'm gonna use a measuring tape. And this is where some of the precision can kind of get a little bit weird. All right, so from one screw to the other screw, we're looking at 42, 42 inches. So. If we multiply that 0 0.0004.13 by the length between our two screws, which is 42 inches, so times 42, we have 0 .17, 0 0.173. And what we can do is we can adjust our calipers, 2.0173. It's really super small. That's one of the best initial cuts I've ever had. 0 0.0175 is as close as I'm going to get on these calipers. And look, that's that's ridiculous. Like that's that's the error. I don't think you can see that, but that's that's the error. This little nubbin is the error over the length of this fence. Um, so if you wanted to try to correct this, which I'm not because that's good enough for me, um, you would basically, um, okay, so what, you got, what you've got, so we know that this is the front and it's, it's basically tilted out, right? What is it? So it's smaller, bigger, we're cutting from this side and then we're cutting here. So it's bigger here, so it's slightly slanted away. So you would basically need to set this up right here with it in a locked position at the, at the position of the screw right there. Then we'll clamp this down gently. Don't wanna break it. You can also do this with um, like feeler gauges if you don't want to. But this is a cheapo 
uh, a cheapo caliper. So I'm just going to lightly clamp that down. Okay, now we can release the lock on that 0.175. Hopefully, it'll still let me do that. Okay, so release the lock on the 0.75. So we can now move that. And what we'll do is we'll undo that initial screw that we've got. Okay. And now we'll just take up that 0.175 slack. And now you'll need to make sure you drill an entire new hole down here. So So we've got this is our reference. We moved it 0 0.015. We're drilling another screw hole. And with this one, since it's so close and such a minor adjustment, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down after I put this one in. So I'm going to drill the rest of the screws out too. But I'm just going to kind of demonstrate this technique. All right, so make sure it's pressed against the reference and you screw it in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and install a couple more screws across here. Uh, and if this was, uh, if this was an edited video, I would uh, speed through this, but since it's not, bear with me for a minute. Make sure you put a couple screws around the blade. That's the most critical part of the fence, you don't want any flex there. Alright. Uh, I like to put a screw like every three or four inches. Depends on how thick your fence is. With this thin of a fence, you want to go pretty tight spacing on your screws. Be careful not to flex the material. I'm just holding it straight down. Uh, that's the last last pre-drill. We'll go countersink all those real quick. Just drive those screws. So now we have a cross cut sled with a 42 inch cut capacity, and it's a platform that we can start doing, start doing a lot of other stuff on. I used half inch material, so I'm only taking away a half inch by maximum cut depth, so I can still use this for cutting some pretty large material, probably up to about, up to about three inch material. So it should be pretty nice. We'll do another validation five cut test just to make sure we're still good. Let's see if we made up any of that, any of that minor error. All right. So we know our initial test piece. Get our workspace cleaned up. Unclamp our reference. Good stuff. I'm proud of that result. I don't know about you guys, but I think if I got that good on the first try, not too bad. 
So we'll make sure that our three and our four are visible. And we'll go ahead and make a couple more cuts. All right, so there's our fourth cut again. Let's uh, measure it again and see if we messed anything up. Zero that out. All right, at the top, we are, oh, let, me, let me mark again. Okay, so this is the front, back, All right, at the front, we cut 0.4345. At the back, we cut 0.4045. Yeah, we actually ended up messing it up. 0.4045. So we're off by 3 hundredths an inch over. Ten and seven eighths inches. So uh, that's as much as I'm going to mess with that because I messed it up by doing it on stream. Uh, that's as much as, I mess, as I'm going to mess with it on this stream. Uh, let's go ahead and get into some of the other fun stuff today. Interesting. Always love fun noises coming from my shop. All right. And we've still got nine people on. Uh, feel free to start throwing in any questions for Q&A into the chat. I'm going to go through the makers of the week if I can ever get my laptop off the stand without disconnecting you guys. All right, all right. So we're here and we're streaming and we're good and it looks like I'm frozen. No, that's just me sitting in front of the camera. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions at all. Go ahead and drop those in the chat. Um, got a couple more minutes, but I'm going to go through the makers of the week. Whoa. All right, so this week um, I want to call out my buddy, Erin uh, Spain. Um, she made some awesome uh, virtual learning setup, and she's also a way better photographer and way better at stylizing shots than I'll ever be. Um, but she made a hairpin uh, virtual learning space uh, for her son. And then she also made a nice matching coffee table um, with kind of the same aesthetic. Um, I don't want to say I was inspired by her because I didn't see her design until after I did. I built mine already, but um, it's very similar to the virtual learning desk I ended up building. I used uh, miters though instead of butt joints on the edges, but I do like that concept of like a open box for. Uh, an open box for you, for your kid. It just gives you a lot of storage options. Um, I, I made my desk a little bit deeper too, but I mean, I just really like the way hers turned out and she's just such a good photographer. Uh, really worth checking her out on uh, Instagram or uh, on YouTube. She makes some phenomenal projects. She's a great photographer also. So really interesting stuff to follow. Follow her at the Aaron Spain blog on Instagram. Um, next follow for the week. Um, is uh, Wood by Wright. Uh, he's a lunatic, but he's a great. <laughs> uh, he's over in Illinois, so not too far away from me. Um, but he made another uh, one of the popular tensegrity tables. Um, but he made his with a live edge slabs, which I think was a really cool twist on the idea. And he also did a really good job of hiding all the turnbuckles to make it really look just like that much more insane. Um, 
I still don't quite understand how these work, but one of these does, I'll probably build one. Um, but a phenomenal woodworker, lunatic with hand tools, uh, ultra marathoner, just interesting guy overall, but Wood by Wright on Instagram, and he's got a Wood by Wright uh, YouTube channel as well. Really good stuff, really great content, and just a true enigma of a human being. <laughs> um, next up is uh, Adam Savage. I was talking about him earlier on the stream. Um, I watch almost all of his one day builds. Uh, and this is one I almost skipped, but I'm glad that I actually ended up checking back in and, and, and tuning into it. Um, he did a, a handmade uh, workshop apron and watching him go through all the steps of like design and iteration and customization of that workshop apron was uh, really inspired me to make to want, want to build my own at some point. Um, it, it's just the ability to just infinitely modify and adjust the, for exactly what you want and, and the way it turned out and the, how easy it looked like the materials are to work with. It just made me want to learn how to sew. So uh, Adam Savage is always a great source of inspiration. Do check him out on YouTube on Adam Savage's Tested on YouTube. Um, but those are the three uh, follows for the week, creators of the week, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that's that for today. Um, now we'll go into the comments, see if there is any questions or anything else that we needed to, that, we, that you guys would like answered while you got me here on stream. Um, feel free to message me on Instagram or Twitter, um, at the Woodwork Life on Instagram, at Woodwork Life on Twitter. Uh, I'm always checking comments and always trying to help out wherever I can. So feel free to drop me a note over there if you miss me here on the Q&A. Um, but I see I got some questions from Angela, and thank you for joining, Angela Stelzer. Uh, so thoughts on the cast iron bandsaw versus steel? Mm. So like uh, the base of a cast iron, the cast iron uh, table is, this, I assume, what you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Bandsaws are um, an amazing tool, and they enable you to do so many cool things. Um, but one thing they are not is they're not a precision tool. They can be relatively precision, um, and, and you can tune them to be close to precision, but they're not a tool that requires a reference surface that's completely dead, like machine, machinist flat. Um, so I think that really with bandsaws, more is better. So if you can, if you can afford a cast iron one, great. Uh, if it's not the cast iron one that gets the job done that you need it to do, so if you need a bigger one or one with more capacity, get one with the capacity more than getting one with a precision top. I, I mean, I, I say that with my Laguna 18BX, which is like kind of the best of all worlds in the back there. Um, but uh, if you can't afford a, a nice like cast iron table saw, go with a, go with a steel one for now. Um, I think that the one thing that I did, hang on, the one thing that I did that I think um, that I think is is under is underrepresented these days is uh, master like one step at a time. Like I didn't introduce a bandsaw into my shop until honestly like the last like year, the last like eighteen months, and I've been doing different woodworking projects for a long time. Um, but I, I avoided bringing a bandsaw into my shop. Because I knew it would simplify and like open up a couple of doors that I wasn't ready to like go through yet. Um, so if you kind of master the basic box designs that you can off a table saw and you know with a with a uh, a circular saw, you can always introduce a bandsaw into your shop workflow later. But if you start with it right away, it might force you to miss some of the basics. Um, but that's that. I hope that answers your question, Angela. Are there any other questions for today? <clears throat> All right, I've got a question for you while I've still got a couple people here. Um, so I'm finishing up the edit on the virtual learning desk. Do you think I should try to rush it out to get it out tonight? Or do you think it'd be better to get like a bonus like Monday or Tuesday release? Normally I release my videos on Thursdays or Saturdays. Um, and I don't know how the YouTube algorithm treats all that, but I'm more worried about how you guys are going to look at it. So should I release it? on when it's done, which would probably be like Monday or Tuesday, or should I hold off, you think, to release it 
on Thursday or Saturday like I normally would. I don't know. You guys probably know more about the YouTube algorithm than I do. Yeah, it's probably too late in the stream anyway, but uh, I'll probably just release it when I'm done with it. Uh, I want to try to get it out as soon as I can. I've got a lot of people that are asking me for the plans, but the video for the virtual learning desk should be coming out later this week. It's going to have full plans. It's going to be a kind of an in-depth build video, basic tools, basic stuff. Yes, Angela, for resawing, um, I would say cast iron table mainly because most of the cast iron tables have more oomph. Um, so if you are using it for resawing, uh, I'd go with one of the cast iron saws. If you find a saw with big capacity and a, you know, that can take an inch blade and uh, that has, um, you know, horse and a half, horse and three quarters motor on it, uh, steel or uh, cast iron shouldn't be a big deal because even after you resaw, you're still going to need to machine both those surfaces. Uh, you know, you're going to have to put them through a planer or a sander to get them smooth. So I, I wouldn't worry about it still steel versus cast iron, Angela. Um, good name though, by the way, that's my wife's name. Um, the, uh, so back to what I was saying. Okay. So I'll probably release that new video on Monday or Tuesday, um, on the virtual learning desk. Um, it's basic tools, full walkthrough. There's going to be a full set of plans available with it. Um, so tune in for that. Make sure you've got your alert alarm bells or whatever set up on your, uh, your subscription. Um, be sure before you jump out of here to like and drop a comment just so that, you know, the YouTube thing works out on this. Um, otherwise, that's about it for today. Thank you guys all for joining me. Um, again, I'm Rick with Woodwork Life. Um, stay tuned. Get subscribed if you're not. Um, and remember to keep your tools sharp. Keep your mind sharper. I'll catch you guys hopefully next Sunday. Till then.